Virgo, my darlings, I'm about to dig in with a gorgeous love reading for you. But I do have the balcony doors open because I'm feeling hot and flustered. I've been trying to get to this reading for the last four hours. So I'm going to use it as a sign, right? As whatever's going on for you, Virgo, at this time, you're finding some com uncomfortable energy in the situation that's just not making you be able to do whatever it is you feel like you need to do in this relationship there's a, there's an there's something in the way that's bothering you so let's look at that if that's that's a sign straight away we'll see if the cards um sink in with that but clearly there's something bothering my virgo in a relationship and it's just um really niggling you at this time and it's maybe you don't even want to watch this reading you don't want to face it you don't want to know the truth whatever the title says maybe something's got you a little bit triggered irritable something's going on and it's hard to just sit with it you rather do a hundred different things you're just it's a little bit avoidant a little bit frustrated a little bit irritated yeah so I'm going to push through this reading now, see if we can get a resolution, but it is incredibly annoying, yeah? Some kind of annoying irritation right now for my Virgos. What is going on? So many cards, the deck's struggling. Okay. Try and get a little more silence in here for you guys. Let's dive in. So, there's something that you don't want to see. There's something that you don't want to look at. There's something that you don't want to address. I feel like you could be a little bit anxious and apprehensive about watching this reading. Because even if this reading reveals the truth to you, it's going to be still really uncomfortable. And it's something that you're going to have to accept, yeah? So, as I look at the cards, um, I'm looking at a situation where your heart is quite closed off. You're in love, but your heart is closed off. We've had the last three readings on the channel that weren't even meant to be for love coming through um, for Virgo with a loving energy. And the moment that we actually decide to do a love reading for real, you're running scared. You don't want anything to do with it. Incredibly interesting energy. The last three readings on the channel for Virgo have been love, heavy in love, deep love, profound love. And now I finally do a love reading and you guys are going, I don't want to look at it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't believe in love. I'm, no, I, I, my heart's closed off. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to see the truth. I don't want to even hear it. You know, when you go to a reading sometimes and you're like, I'm going to watch it, but I don't know if I'm in the right energy to watch it. I don't know if I'm in the right vibration to handle what comes through. Because if the hermitologist says, says something I'm not ready to process, then it may not go down well at all. That's what I'm kind of getting here. But we're going to have to go in. Nonetheless, we've already started, Virgo. You're already here, okay? So let's dig in. I'm going to look at your energy, their energy, and any other surrounding energies that want to come out straight away. Yeah, you're indecisive about something. You don't want to make a decision. You, you don't want to also go back on your word, I feel, as well. You're feeling a little bit defeated about something you've got yourself into. You feel like it's victorious, but you're scared that you're going to go back on your word. You're going to back out. Oh, uh, I get it. You're going for a little bit of self-sabotage, destructive behaviours and traits, yeah? When you fall in love with someone and the passion's strong and you see this having real potential, then you're always looking for an escape hatch, an escape clause, a way out. Because with this person, you can have a long-term future, marriage, kids, wife, husband, family, um, same sex or not, whatever it is, it's a beautiful connection. And um, I really resonate with this energy. It's just like, no, get me away, man. Get me away, like... I went for a stage in a relationship, and this is just one example to give you, where um, every time the relationship started to kind of get serious and we started to kind of do something that was a little bit more official, like staying over at each other's houses, going on dates, or the potential of them being around my family, or us just um, having a really lovely, loving experience earlier that morning, earlier that day, earlier that night, the next day... I'm so sabotaging, like, I just want, I'm suddenly, I'm meant to stay and have breakfast, but I'm running out the door, I want to leave, and I'm just panicking, and, and I'm creating an argument, and, I, and I'm just, I'm just self-destructing, because it's, it's a fear, a fear-based vibration of, whoa, this is actually really nice, and really comfortable, and, um, something I want that I never thought I would actually have, and, um, 
I got all these lovely loving feelings inside of me for this person and I'm scared. I'm scared to talk about it. I'm scared to process it. I'm scared if something goes wrong. I'm scared emotionally. Like there's just so, so much fear around the whole situation. And sometimes you do you bounce from being really um, loving to being really really cold. And then sometimes you worry that if this keeps happening, then you're not going to be able to really long balance out the connection long term. Because one minute you're super loving, receptive, sex looks like it's incredibly passionate and fire, but then other times you're just like really worried. You're waiting for something to go wrong all the time, and you so badly want to commit to this. But you so badly are petrified of not being enough. It going wrong. You losing your independence. Them losing their independence. You lying to them. I don't even think you're worried about them lying to you. I think you're more worried about you lying to them. You know, Oh, I resonate, man. Goodness me. You know when you make promises, I love you and I want to be with you and I want to have kids and a family with you. I want a house with you. I want us to go on holiday. I want us to do this. I want us to do that. You set all of these goal, goals and milestones and you speak about your wants, needs and desires. But you're even scared of how likely it is for all of these things to come true. Like, you know when you should be excited, like, wow, I'm manifesting all of this. This is real. This is happening. But... I mean, if we're programmed with a, a really old narrative from childhood that makes it clear that we've suffered um, really shitty relationships in the past and we've seen really um, bad parenting styles and role models in love um, from our parents and um, family network, then it makes us want to run away, you know? It makes us think, no, I can't have this, no, no. Normally something goes wrong, normally I get cheated on. No, normally... Um, this happens. Normally that happens. Th this can't be right. Surely not, you know? Scary thought to think that everything you've ever wanted is in front of you and you can have it. The only thing that's ever going to stop you is your, your ability to stay true to your word. How horrible. You know what I mean? Like, like if, you, if you're coming from a shitty background and upbringing where, um, like I said before, then yeah, it's scary. Not everyone is privileged in um, relationship dynamics and loving relationships and g equal give and take and not being an over giver or a people pleaser or not withdrawing and spending frequent times alone in solitude knowing how to um have e uh, reciprocal relationships yeah when you've only known unreciprocal relationships yeah you're you've either not only known um givers or takers You've never had a relationship where the balance between both of them have been it's been, it's been equal, you know? So right away, I'm looking at a masculine energy, a strong, powerful vibration in the middle of all of this. And um, so I'm looking at a really dominant masculine who would rather not be as dominant as he has been, male or female, someone who has been pulled away from their emotions. When we speak about the masculine, we're speaking about pulling away from emotions. Someone who's pulled away from their emotions, been really cold and could be working on your business a lot, focusing on your career goals. You haven't been too loving, but this relationship has forced you, forced you into a more of a loving space in your life. It's everything you've ever wished for and dreamed of. Oh, when they're not with you, you feel shit. You want them, you love them, you're fulfilled by them. Once again, the sex is amazing. Intimacy, romance is, is fucking fabulous, you know? But you're waiting for them to say you've done something wrong. You're waiting for things to fuck up. You're waiting for the truth to be revealed. Like, you're waiting for someone to... You're waiting to find out that someone doesn't really want you, that someone's really cheated, that there's a lie, that there's an argument. You're waiting for the penny to drop because you don't believe in this. This person holds you up incredibly well. They support you incredibly well. They love you. They have morals. They have integrity. They're respectful. They're kind. They're generous. They'll do anything for you. They tell you they love you and that they truly value you. They tell you that they want to be with you and see forever with you. And you just can't believe it because it's so passionate. It's so loving. It's so everything you don't know, you know? You're used to devil toxic relationships with liars, cheaters, and no love, just sex and ego and money. 
people silencing you, aggressive, abusive relationships. Like whoever you're with, they're wise, they're intelligent, they're smart, they read a lot of books, they're really switched on and articulate and spiritual and oh, they do these little sexy things like maybe slap your ass or do this cute little foreplay stuff or remind you how sexy and beautiful you are over and over again. And you might have like gorgeous breakfasts together, quality time together, you might spend a lot of time naked in bed together. This person has made it clear to you, they will ride for you through whatever storm comes your way in the future. They're down. They're down to be your other, yeah? Really seriously down. It's clear as day they want you and they love you and they adore you. It's just a simple fact is, are you willing to put the work in? Because it is about the work. Commitment over and over again scary if you've got commitment issues and you don't even realize you've got commitment issues or you, you just never really considered these things to be a factor you need strength here this isn't about them this isn't oh i want to say this isn't even about you this is about your inner programming and the default settings that you have created for yourself in love i resonate with this so intently it's really shit energy i understand why you didn't want to come here and engage with this but I'm very experienced to have this kind of conversation, so I am glad you're here. If you are resonating, please hit the like. Feel free to share more in the comments. But what I will say to you about all of this, yeah, is it's up to you to break the ancestral curse. It's up to you to break out of this cycle and this limiting construct and these limiting beliefs about what you can and can't have in love. Because you have the most beautiful, profound, loving, divine relationship in front of you. And I, I know it's probably even stupid and cheesy for me to even say it that way. Because you come across as someone who's like, well, yeah, whatever, hermatologist, whatever, Louise, yeah, right, whatevs. But it is true. You are intently and deeply loved. And until you can actually look at love and receive love without being turned off or fearful or disappointed or like roll your eyes in disbelief like you just push it away you want this so badly but you push it away out of fear that it's not real or that it's that it's not gonna last you know and oh it's hard isn't it it's really fucking hard because so badly you just want to let go and feel safe with another. You may have been cheated on, heartbroken in the past. You've just been hurt in so many different ways. You've had so many relationships that are inconsistent, unreliable. And you get to a place in your life where you just rely on you. And the safety comes from knowing that you always have you. You always have you no matter what. And yeah, you want to be able to have someone else and give all of what you have to someone else. But... The track record is void, you know? The track record says this isn't going to work. History, if it is going to repeat itself, if we are paradoxical looping here, going through these symptoms of what has occurred in previous dimensions of space-time, then this already is written to not work. You know, and that's the programming in the mind. I don't believe that's true. The cards don't say that's true, Virgos. But you believe that. And whatever you believe will be true, you know? This makes me hella sad because we've had such gorgeous energy coming through. The moment we do a love reading for real, Virgos, you're like, fuck this. I don't want to know. But the high vibrations you've been in when we're just talking generally without labelling it as a love reading, oh, your heart's all in. But the moment we actually say the L word, love, could this really be the one, the other, the husband, the wife, the one you spend the rest of your life with, marriage, kids, beautiful home, the American dream, the white pecket fence? I mean, cheesy, cliche, but I mean, Virgo, you know what you want. You're a perfectionist. You always know what you want. You've always been striving and working towards what you want. And you definitely do want this. It's clear as day. This person also wants it with you, it's clear as day. No matter what you go through with this person, they will work through it with you. If you're up, you're down, you're sad, you're broken, all of these feelings that you're having now and these insecurities and fears, you could talk to this person about it and they would happily support you through it. 
and understand that this is a crutch in your side and a bit of an old program program that you're just going to have to work through with them, you know? Like, oh my gosh, this, like, I, I'm trying not to cry, so I don't know how you're holding up emotionally. I'm sending you loves and kisses and cuddles through the screen. But, um, this is, uh, in my head, I get the runaway bride. And I've seen it loads of times with, with, um, what's her name? Julia Roberts. Is that right? Yeah. And, um, every time, like, she's had so many weddings. And every time she gets down the aisle, she just runs away. Every single time. And she she always falls in love. She always finds someone and it's always love. And then the moment that they're engaged and the wedding day arrives, she runs away, hops on a motor, motorbike to escape, hops on the back of a horse to escape, does whatever she can to get away from the wedding. It's just like, no, no. Last minute nerves. She just runs away. You've got to break this ancestral curse, Bergs. Me and you together, because you're not alone on this. I'm sitting here, and I'm taking this in. And this is probably why I didn't want to do this reading, because I'm a Virgo, and I, I knew there was energy that we were avoiding. And to be slapped in the face with it, and for it to also apply to me, it sucks. Because I know that I really fuck myself up the arse all the time in relationships. Because... Sometimes it's just easier to get on that horse, or get on that motorbike, and just drive away get away you know it's safer her, her, this is the hermit channel virgos are hermits that is our card that is what we know we internalize we're perfectionist where we, we have safety in our loneliness in our solitude and if we've been alone long enough heartbroken long enough traumatic triggersome relationships from the past that always end in shit ways then yeah it's easier to run you know, and it's sad because it's true, but it's not what you want, Virgo. That's all. It's not what you want. If if I, if you didn't care about this person, if you didn't care about this, then I would say, whatever, just run. Go. I agree with you. Let's get out of it. But, oh, you're genuinely in love this time. You really do want this this time. This is the best you've ever had it. You definitely want this, then you're gonna have to try. You're gonna have to try. And you're gonna have to let this person know I'm not good at this. I'm not used to this. I'm scared I'm gonna hurt you. I'm scared I'm gonna let you down. I'm gonna wanna pull away, run away, avoid you, avoid this, and act out in a hundred different ways. But it's not even going to be your fault. It's going to be the fault of the fact that I don't even know how to move forward with this, love. I don't know how to process the feelings that I have for you. I don't, I've never had anything like this, so I don't know how to proceed. I know it's everything that I want, but I just don't know how to even want this. I don't even know, like, I've never even said that either, but it's like, I don't even know how to want what I want. How do I want what I want? How do you learn to want what you want? When you never get what you want. You know? Harsh but true. How do you get what you want? When you never get what you want. Like, how, how do you learn to get what you want when you never get what you want in love? You take a risk, right? You own the truth. You wear your heart on your sleeve. You prepare for it to get ruined again. And you accept that that is the cycle of life because in the words of Aristotle... Educating the mind is nothing without educating the heart. Yeah? You can be smart, as wise, as articulate and amazing and giving and receptive and all of these beautiful words and beautiful things that you can be. But if you don't know how to educate your heart, then there's always going to be a piece of you missing. 
that heart chakra is the center of all chakras so you can go around and fix your root chakras fix your sacral fix your solar plexus fix your throat fix your third eye and fix your crown but every single one of those drives straight into the heart chakra the most important chakra of all so if you can't align to that if you can't have that open and present every day then your destiny and true purpose in love will lead you astray, guys. It sucks. This is a wake-up call for me as well. Real, like, I'm sitting here like, fuck. Virgos have been turning up for weeks. Every reading I come over here, me and Virgo are getting lit. What? <laughs> love is in the air. <laughs> but now it's like, it's getting real, isn't it? Because we, we actually put in out an official love read and it's like really thought-provoking and heavy and a little burdensome which is the, the shadow sides of love you know it shows that we haven't really brought um our, our love and our heart chakra to the light yet with a lot of shadow work and um dark night of the soul and a lot of darkness still remains in our heart chakra that we were unaware of but what's so beautiful is we're not alone anymore because we are loved and it's obvious that we're loved. It's someone is present in our life who loves us and truly does care about us. And I guess that's been the trigger for us to evolve and awaken because it's not a fear vibration of losing them. It's just the fear of doing it all over again and, and having the same result. But the only reason you'll have the same result again, Virgo, is if you choose to do the same thing you've done before. Yeah? Don't run away. Don't hide your feelings. Don't deny your, that you're in shadow. Oh, if you are low and you're shit and you're scared about this, speak on it. Own it in any way you can. If there's moments in the relationship and in the connection, even if you're in the middle of getting jiggy and it's deep sexual moments and suddenly you just feel this overwhelming need to run away or like freak out and just you're going to have a nervous breakdown in, emotionally or your chakras are intently triggered learn a coping mechanism to breathe i'm getting that tapping um do you know about tapping yeah a therapeutic technique so you tap the third eye you tap to the right of your temple the left of your temple you tap um under your left eye under your right eye you tap all over your face basically just keep tapping it's an ang um a um mindfulness somewhat technique yeah i think tapping will be really really good for you i think you should also tell your partner and whoever you're dealing with at this time to also um get involved in um tapping yeah facial tapping even um body tapping as well and um just um maybe gripping the shoulders gripping the arms a, a strong grips as well as as kind of a soothing technique it's a bit more used um for children with autism that would like use heavy weighted blankets but um i'm very neurodiverse so i'm very aware of how those kind of weighted heavy um touches and approaches will just help heal when you have the desire to run away even maybe a weighted blanket at night could also be good for you as well okay um heavy day today guys which is nice because we can't always be in high vibes and light so me and the virgo have gone down to the shadow just to look at our um inner um our inner critic a little bit and um our, i guess our inner demons if we're owning it our inner demons in love because this is the only thing that's blocking us from having a really wholesome healthy relationship and truly being in love and being safe right this is you being at the top of the um cliff Rick, let's say rick's cafe jamaica you're on the edge you want to jump off you want to dive into the water everyone's running past you they're diving straight in it's fun it's amazing they're all coming out again and again diving back in and you just can't seem to just let go and just dive you know you keep running up to the edge of the cliff and as you get there you quickly yeah, go ah you halt yourself and you're nearly wobbling over the edge because you're quit on your tiptoes trying to stop and slow down the pace of how quickly you're moving but all you've got to do is dive in which is easier said than done, you know. But you will get there, Virgs. You will. And I hope that you stayed all the way to the end and processed these heavier emotions with me today. And there's going to be a lot more love readings on the channel now that we've moved the crypto over to a new address. And um, the Industrial Revolution has also moved address and the, and the um, institutional news. So um, we're going to play around over here with a lot more internal thoughts and feelings and a lot more love and light and... Um, 
we're gonna look at this a little bit more okay and i'm sitting right here with you accepting the fact that fuck me i've got problems when it comes to relationships and um how I choose to love and how easier it is to just push people away when it gets too scary or keep it in a realm of sex and dating and when it ever comes anything more serious boy do you just want to run away you know okay that's the cats banging on the door I'm gonna let them in and I'm gonna let you go okay love and light Virgs <laughs> Just be